This is a quick demo of the current Port-a-Pack software as of July 22, 2015. Um, first, I plug in the Port-a-Pack. You see it boots almost instantly, and we have a menu that has a bunch of different options. Uh, the most interesting to start with is uh, the receiver mode, which can receive AM or narrowband or wideband FM uh, radio uh, audio signals and uh, over the entire range of frequencies that the HackRF board is capable of. <clears throat> so here I'm going to key in a specific frequency. It happens to be a local weather radio frequency and we'll be able to hear the weather. Uh, I'll turn the volume up here a little bit. Do a little fine tuning. And there you go. So obviously this is the frequency field right here. And then the two next values are, turn the volume back down, the um, gain control so that you can adjust the RF gain, the uh, LNA amplifier at the beginning of the receiver input section. And then these are two other gains further down the road. Uh, you can then set the modulation here. You can switch over to wideband mode and I can go tune a local radio station. Festival. And there you go. There's no spectrogram here. Um, at the moment it takes too much CPU to display the spectrum for this wideband mode, but I'm, gonna work, I'm working on that, trying to improve it. Uh, there's also an AM mode. Um, we can tune over to one of the local aviation frequencies. Oops. One, two, one, two, three. No, wait, what is it? One, two, eight, <laughs> point three, five. This is what happens when you don't prepare for your demo. Okay, so here we are, and if I turn the volume back up again, we should be able to hear the automated weather information. So there you go. Um, I should point out up at the top right corner here are three bar graphs. The top one is the received signal strength indicator going into the second IF chip um, and it shows a spread of the minimum, maximum, and uh, the white bar in the center is the average RSSI value. The second bar is the um, digital baseband um, signal strength. And ideally, that's pretty much as far, as long and far to the right as possible without going over. And then the bottom band is the demodulated audio uh, signal, st audio strength. Um, and that, you know, just indicates how loud the audio is. Um, so as you've seen, there's a, f a frequency field. Uh, you can control the step um, as you turn the wheel, how, how quickly the frequency changes. You can see in the spectrogram that uh, that changes when you move it. Uh, the two gain controls with the additional amp value, the modulation mode, and this is a debugging value which will disappear shortly. This is the volume for the audio output. Uh, then we have down below, we have uh, an indication of scale, so you can see um, if I change the modulation mode, the f frequency width here changes from 3K to 5K, so you can tell roughly where on the spectrogram the frequencies fall. And um, then the yellow and green bar here, very thin bar, shows you what the channel filter characteristics are. The green area is the pass band and the yellow area is the transition band to the stop band. Um, the stop band isn't actually visible on on this display because it's outside the edges of the screen. So that's it for the receiver mode. Uh, I'll go back and look at a couple of other things. Uh, you'll notice almost everything else in here is stubbed out. So capture mode is not yet implemented. The analyze mode is not yet implemented. There is setup so you can set the date and time on the device. Uh, this is useful in the future when um, logging to the SD card is supported. 
Uh, touch screen calibration is not yet implemented. Uh, so far in my testing of several hundred units, uh, touch screen calibration hasn't really been necessary, but it's something I want to get in here fairly soon. Uh, there's the about box, which as of yet does not actually show the get revision or the CRCs from the two CPLD chips. Uh, again, that's another bug or a feature that I need to implement soon. And lastly, there's a debug mode, and it will show you various properties about the device, including the um, fragmentation of the processor memory. Um, most of the rest of these are still unimplemented, as you can see. But here's an example of one that is implemented. This is the first IF stage chip, and it just dumps the register values in that part and shows it to you. Um, so that's what the port pack software does right now. There's not a lot there, but it is useful. Um, and uh, it's just going to get better as time goes on. Thanks for watching.